طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبي... بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبين استعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد uh, As you know uh, mammogram is a gold standard method of breast imaging and بفضل الله تعالى وحمده we complete the course of mammography and today we are going to start a high resolution press ultrasound and as you know it is a second chair in orchestra of diagnostic breast imaging tools. And along with mammography representing the conventional modalities is complementary both for mammography as well as for breast MRI. Ultrasound has been playing an increasing important role representing an additional diagnostic tool raising, uh, raises the detection rate of breast cancer as well as benign breast lesions. Okay. Uh, the learning objectives of our uh, breast ultrasound course is to discuss the following. Would like to understand by the end of the course, what is breast ultrasound, how to do breast ultrasound regarding uh, including proper equipment, uh, describe ultrasound technique and technical considerations for optimizing breast sonography. Also, we want to know what is normal on ultrasound, what is the sono uh, sonographic anatomy and the uh, press ultrasound terminology, when to do press ultrasound, uh, the indications, and how to read press ultrasound using ultrasound uh, SCR lexicons for image interpretations, including features of benign as well as malignancy, and what are the peers and pitfalls of breast ultrasound? What is elastography, uh, breast ultrasound state of art? How breast ultrasound supplement the interventional procedures? and how to use ultrasound in management of press clinical problem using a case discussion or case examples. And today we are going to start with uh, the introduction and uh, by how to do press ultrasound, discussing uh, AMIC quality issues and technique for AMIC uh, optimization, including selection of proper equipment. So what is press ultrasound? Press ultrasound is the use of medical ultrasound or ultrasonography to, uh, to perform imaging of the breast. Having the same concepts of medical ultrasounds, okay, using the same machines. And it started about five decades earlier as long as mammography. And the first clinical use of press ultrasound was reported 1951 by Wild Anil, okay? And there, uh, thereafter, uh, uh, subsequent made of development uh, for press ultrasound uh, okay. And you can see here, this is earlier, a press ultrasound, a grayscale image, a 19 in 1970s. Can you imagine this crude image? Uh, in this crude image, this is a cyst, and compare it with high resolution current, very beautiful imaging, delineating a simple cyst. So confidently here we can say this is a benign lesion, no need to put a needle and to take a biopsy. And with advances in ultrasound technology, the role of ultrasound has been extended not only to differentiate cystic from solid, but further characterizing the soft tissue masses to differentiate benign from malignant masses and describing the cyst further differentiated symbols, septated clusters of cysts and what is inside the ducts, okay? And further delineating the normal anatomy of the breast to the level of terminal duct 
lobular unit as seen in this image. And the continuous advances in ultrasound technology of higher frequency transducer as well as improved uh, device software result in possible highlight fine structures like micro classifications as you have seen in this case look for this is small lesions and associated micro classification in a case of lobular carcinoma with associated dcis in the uh, outer upper outer right brace was not seen on uh, uh, the mammographic uh, the associated mammography study. And to the era of 3D ultrasound, the development being extended. Okay. As with all imaging modalities, the value of ultrasound for detection and diagnosis is largely depends on the quality of the images. An appropriate technique is crucial crucial to achieve accurate lesion characterization. And this is, is uh, emphasized in the second edition of the American College of Radiology, ACR latest edition, edition 2013. So there is of all to have image, uh, good image quality will start from the machine selections, which ultrasound equipment features are beneficial for breast ultrasonography. Okay, the ACR practice guideline for performance of breast uh, ultrasound examination 2011, they recommend the use of real-time handheld transducer with high resolution linear array broadbands with uh, with a center frequency of at least 10 megahertz at the high frequency end between 12 and 18 megahertz in their lower frequency tissue penetration of five centimeter obtainable. And the current uh, generation ultrasound machines offer additional image processing facilities including higher resolution multi-frequency transducer, harmonic imaging, compound imaging, Doppler speed of sound imaging, hard, uh, we mentioned the high resolution transducer, elastography and 3D, uh, th uh, 3D ultrasound uh, of the breast. Uh, these are more recent. All Almost all of these technologies are available in modern unit and are optionals, and we have to make use of it to help in improving ultrasound image. So starting by the uh, transducer, uh, press ultrasound <clears throat> have excellent it should have excellent spatial and contrast resolutions. And the broadband high frequency linear electronically focused probe currently offer the best combination of both. Excellent spatial as well as contrast resolution for breast ultrasound up to 0.1 millimeter resolutions. And the high resolution broadband width linear transducer available are 12.5, 17.5, and currently there is also 18.5. Okay. And the latest, uh, this is now they are, uh, is recommended to be used. And because they, um, the, the studies or one of the study uh, showed that. Most of the praise with optimizing positioning, okay, uh, it will be compressed to the uh, maximum depth of three centimeters. So it will not be uh, more superficial for the depth 
of most of the crest. Ideally, a wide footprint uh, probe is recommended and they recommend uh, the available is 38 millimeter or 3.5 centimeter and five centimeter uh, footprint. They don't recommend the six, uh, uh, six centimeter. They said that it will be large and the edge of the probe, it will not be in contact with the breast. It's okay. May I ask you questions? Can you tell me this image, okay, which one with 17.5 and which one with 12.5 linear transducer? This is the same lesions, okay? Same press, same lesions. One examine with each transducer. May you tell me which transducer for each image? The left? Well, the left is the left. Uh, this 17. Is the left this is the right, huh? 17. 17 is the left. This is the 17, and this is the right. Why? 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 The depth, because uh, 17 is more superficial than 12.5. Uh, so, because the lesion is just beyond the skin. So it need a higher resolution transducer to give more details. And the 17 is higher frequency. Uh, it has to give uh, the better resolution in this case. If you look here, this is a TS, you are right. This is 12.5 uh, megahertz transducer. It, it looks like as if it is questionable. Is it a fat lobule or rear lesions or what? But by using a higher frequency probe, it, it is clearly here, probably benign lesions, looking look like fibroadenoma, and it was stable on uh, follow-up. Though the usually uh, the commonly used for the breast or for the average breast is 12.5 megahertz. Okay, if you don't if you don't have the 17.5 megahertz, how you can approach or you can improve the visualization of these superficial lesions? By putting pads, applying pads. What, Hin? You are right. Applying pads to see more superficial. Applying what? Pads. Pads of gel, yes. Yeah about one centimeter or so, okay, bad of gels, uh, it will uh, uh, add more depth for the lesions and we can use it to see the most superficial one. Yes, yes. The commonly used we said is uh, 70, is 12.5, but uh, we can use uh, stand off of bad of large or large glob of gel to visualize the most superficial lesions with relatively less frequent uh, frequency probe. Okay, and usually uh, the depth. What is the depth of 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 a transducer of each transducer? Up to. Okay, we'll discuss later, no problem. Okay, regarding the emic selections, as we describe, okay, we said in the previous examples, the higher frequency, okay, will be good for more superficial lesions, but the breast will attenuate the sound and the deeper structures might not be visualized by this higher frequency. And as we described for the recent uh, or modern ultrasound press, the linear broad bandwidth transducer enable us to scan with a high resolution in superficial tissue without compromise of penetration deeper to Field of view up to five centimeters. 
up to five, five centimeter depth. Yeah, and you will see five centimeter depth. This is with five centimeter if you use the 12, five megahertz. But if you use 17, five or 18, five, you will see up to three centimeter depth. See? Okay. It will be difficult to visualize beyond that. But yeah, rarely we might have a huge breast, large breast, or sometimes the axilla, the more deep structures, okay, in the axilla. Or sometimes there is some inflammation also attenuate the sound. So sometimes we might need to use a lower frequency transducers, okay? And sometimes even we might need to, uh, to use the convex or the curved transducer. As you have seen here, this is in the axilla key. These malignant lymph nodes are so deep in the axilla, this is my case, difficult to be visualized by the linear uh, transducer. I use the curved transducer to visualize deep into the axilla. Also, this is my patients. You see, this is large lesions and attenuating the sound. I could not evaluate the deep margins of the lesions. Even I use a trapezoid extended field of view. So when I used the curved array, I could visualize the whole lesions and I could measure it well. And I'm not losing even the margin characteristic of the lesions. This is another example here, heavily shadowing lesions. I could not evaluate and see the, the deep portions, the extent of the lesions when I use the, the curved low frequency transducer. I could see the whole lesions and without losing its characters, the suspicious features, and I could measure it. Okay, so to understand uh, something about the resolutions, okay, especially the spatial resolutions of the transducer, the transducer have long axes and have short axis or elevation plane, okay? And usually the long axis, okay, can be electronically focused. However, the short axis is usually fixed for each probe, okay? And these are affecting the lateral uh, resolutions. And we'll see together what is the lateral resolution. But with uh, within the modern, ultrasound machines, there is something what is called matrix probe. Malaz is going to tell us about it more than me, okay? And this matrix probe has having a facilities, okay, to focus also in a short axis or in elevation plane, which is usually fixed for each probe, okay? And this is why, because the too deep focus, Okay, or too deep structure or lesions, it will cause volume averaging artifacts. Okay, with the with the uh, high frequency transducer, we'll see here. And so also we have to optimize the uh, focal zone for the lateral resolutions. This is the elevation blends with what we said it is fixed for each transducer. And you see, for this, as we mentioned before, we, we said uh, three centimeters and uh, it is it, for this uh, transducer here, okay, it is about 1.5 centimeter, while for the low frequency, it is a little bit deep for about three centimeter. What does it mean? This is the narrower, the narrow beam. Look for the narrow beam. And the area of the 
max, uh, maximum narrowing. You see here the maximum narrowing, it, is, it will be about 1.5. And the area of maximum narrowing, you see, the lesion, it will be sharply delineated. You can see the lesion sharply delineated, but if it is not at, this, at the narrowest part of the beam, high or low, okay? So like this, it will affect the lateral resolutions. And this part will give a volume averaging. And this volume averaging will affect the margins of the lesion as well as the content of the lesion itself. If you have a cyst, if you see it here, definitely the cyst, it will be sharply demarcated, okay? And you will see it as equilucent structures. But if it is fall here within these regions, you will see the cyst as might be hypochoic, looking like a soft tissue region, okay? Or, or it might be completely uh, misinterpreted. Is it clear? So yes. with, with the higher frequency transducer, that is why the higher frequency transducer is better for imaging lesion closer, okay, to the skin. Because the narrow zone or the narrower beam width it will be more close to, to the skin, okay? So it will improve. This will improve differentiation between a subtle shade of gray and the margin resolution, as well as lesion conspicuity in background of uh, fatty parenchyma. Okay, also to improve this, we call it lateral resolution. That what we discussed, this is a lateral resolution regarding the depth. Also, this can be affected by optimizing the focal zone. You know, in ultrasound machine, there is a cursor, okay, or there is a bottom. You have to uh, move it and fix what is called a focal zone. Okay, this will affect the lateral resolution even with a high frequency matrix pro. Also, we have to optimize the focal zones. It indicated by moving arrow head at the side of the screen. See, as, as here, look for this one. This is the focal zone at the, far away from the cyst. Look for the cyst. It seem as, as if it is a soft tissue with the focal zone at the level of the cyst or the middle of the lesions, then it will optimize image and giving a better characterization of real cystic structures. So when serving, surveying the breast, the focal zone, it should be placed at the mammary zone, at the middle between the skin and the pectoralis muscles to visualize, to give overview. But when uh, a lesion is identified, then we have to place it at the center of the lesion to have an optimum lateral resolutions. If you have three focal zones and sometimes two focal zones, also we can adjust it accordingly. The effect this is the focal zones. When you put the cursor like this, then that means you put the lesion at the narrow, okay? The narrower part of the beam. That is why we will optimize, okay? The margin resolution or the lateral resolutions. We'll see better the margins and better the component or uh, textures of the lesions. Right. Uh, the, uh, the if Effect of ultrasound focusing, the focal zone indicated by white um, uh, appropriate in the left plane showing anechoic. This is the same what we discussed, okay? This is another example here. Look for this image, how it is blurred and structureless, okay? 
we can see nothing because the focal zones was not appropriately placed. You see, look the focal zones here is far from the uh, area of interest. It is at the back of the image, even below the pectoral muscles. So that is why everything is blurred and we can see nothing. When the focal zone is adjusted, look how the image demonstrates all these details. Okay. Regarding equipment selections, we need to have a wide field of view for a single sweep. Okay. So what is a, a, a field, a wide field of view? Do you know it? Mm -hmm. This is what we call it a panoramic view, okay? The panoramic view, the extended field of view, also we call it a panoramic view. You will use the, the, the machines, you press a button and you sweep throughout the area of interest like this, okay? Giving a single image for a larger area extending beyond the footprint. If the footprint is five centimeter, this area might extend up to 10 centimeter continuously. We call it a panoramic view or extended field of view. It is an options, you see? And it is helpful, especially in case of multifocal and multicentric multi uh, disease, you can measure uh, large lesions or measures collectively multifocal lesions within a same quadrant or within a five centimeter area or measure the distance between the lesion to decide is it a multifocal or multicentric if it is more than five centimeters, you see? And you can also, okay, evaluate the lesions in relation to the other structures, like in relation to the nipples and so forth. This is here, this is a, my patients. This is a panoramic view, look for the lesions is larger than the footprint that is we could and this is here look for these lesions in this image we can see when of the, the lesion in the other image we could see when you can use it in transverse and in longitudinal when you change to perpendicular view you can see more than one lesion this is uh, when uh, way or one method of extended field of view. There is another method for extended field of view to divide the screen into two parts. You will take the image, this part, and you fix it or, and then uh, open the, the, the second uh, field of, uh, of view and take the rest of the lesions. Look here, this is the duct, but if you can see, these are two, two screen, okay? Or two views. The rest, look for the rest of the ducts. There is a soft tissue here in a case of a cancer related to a duct. We call it a bended image, okay? Uh, not like that when the one image panoramic view or the, uh, the previous extended field of view. There is also, what is the difference between these three image? This is the usual rectangular, okay, of the image of the linear transducer. And this panoramic view, extended field of view. What about this one? This we call it a trapezoid imaging, okay? The field of view 
is widened in the far zone. Also, this a trapezoid image, and here this is a trapezoid image. It looks like same like the sector or the convex probe, but it is not a convex probe. It is a linear probe, but there is a facility to widen the far zone. Okay, wider the base of the image, give a trapezoid, a triangular like uh, image, like the convex uh, probe image. Okay, so these are three way of extended field of view and ultrasound. Most of ultrasound machines having the facilities of the three or having facility of some of which. But currently, okay, the 3D with 14 to 15 centimeter footprint enable a broad sweep of tissue displayed in, uh, in three-dimensional ultrasound. Uh, okay, we need a Doppler. What is the importance of Doppler for press ultrasound? Do you think it is important or, or how it is important for you? Yes, it, it can differentiate some lesions from from others. And for example, if we have a, a cyst and uh, inside it there is um, a soft tissue component. Excellent. Excellent. Can, yeah. Yes, help in the help, help in evaluation of complex cyst. Okay, cyst. Excellent. Well done. What else? Um, also inside the ducts, yani the same uh, concept inside the ducts. So we have a yes, uh, yes, intraductal, intraductal, intra lesions. Excellent, well done. Helpful in intraductal lesions. What else? Helpful. Uh huh. What? Hello, in the auxiliary lymph node. If it auxiliary is auxiliary lymph node. Excellent, well done. Okay. Uh, what else? Mastitis and inflammatory processes in the breast. Excellent. Vascularity of a suspicious lesion. Uh-huh. Vascularity of a suspicious lesion. Uh, to see the vascularity Excellent. of a suspicious lesion. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, it is, it is, Doppler is complementary to the gray scale, okay? And uh, current ultrasound lexicon, they recommend evaluation of lesion vascularity uh, but not as a mandatory as optional as a complementary to the gray scale okay uh, because why because there is substantial overlap between benign and malignant features but before going to characterizing these type of lesions what impo uh, um, important technical issue uh, while doing Doppler, we should not press hard. The transducer should be lightly, okay, pressing into the lesion so as not to occlude the vessels. Otherwise, you might see or you might not detect vascularity. If you press, yeah, uh, you you press hard, okay? This is one technical issue. Regarding the differentiation between benign and malignant, as we mentioned, there are overlap, but generally, generally, uh, in general, more, more the malignant lesions demonstrates uh, more, more vascularity with penetrable or penetrating vessels having aliasing. We'll see it in the interpret interpretations part of the ultrasound. But <clears throat> yani, the, the, pattern, the pattern of vascularity a little bit more suspicious than in the benign natures, which are usually peripheral, double vascular, Veins, when we find veins and artery, separable vein and artery, 
and at the periphery of the lesions, not within the center of the lesions, more in favor of benignity. While usually with malignant, the vessels are irregular, branching, giving a liaising artifact, penetrating the lesions, going into inside the lesions, and all these features more in favor of malignancy. But as we mentioned, not yani, very uh, precisely differentiating uh, between the benignity and malignancy. But definitely, Doppler is helpful, especially in intraductal lesion, if it is present. If it is not present, it will not exclude. But if it is present, definitely it will preclude that it is to be in specific secretions and useful in evaluation of scars, complicated cysts or complex cysts, and in uh, and in case of uh, lymph nodes. Okay, these are examples of a duct. Okay, demonstrating intraductal uh, vascular echoes. That means these definitely are not uh, uh, in specific secretions. These are soft tissue. We have to go further. Uh, for, uh, for to exclude uh, or to ev to give a pathological diagnosis for this soft tissue in these both cases where uh, a babyloma. While in this complex cyst, there is a soft tissue component with the feeding vessels here. Okay, we cannot decide before doubler. And also in this case, this is. Uh, an inflammatory cyst, complex or complicated cyst with peripheral vascularity, similar lesion here. It is high grade invasive cancer with intra lesion vascularity. So it differentiate between the two these two lesions. This is invasive cancer and this is inflammatory cyst, and also this heavily uh, vascular high grade lesions appear as anechoic lesions like cystic lesions presence of vascularity uh, especially in high grade cancer differentiate cyst from uh, soft tissue uh, malignant lesions and also the metastatic lymph nodes even if it is not high, deeply hypocortic or cystic, the presence of cortical vascularity is definitely uh, a suspicious findings on uh, lymph nodes. And Doppler is also helpful in post therapy evaluations. Look for these lesions, uh, the vascularity, how it reduced uh, after treatment. And in this case of calcification seen here on mammography, and this is gray scale ultrasound. On Doppler ultrasound demonstrate what is called as Twinkles artifact. Uh, this artifact is mixture of red and blue color. Uh, it is usually occur um, behind strong is, uh, specular reflectors like calcification and biopsy clips. Okay. What about this image? This ultrasound elastography. What is this? Excellent. So here, yes? Yes, this is ultrasound elastography. Uh, yes, this is, this is elastography. This is a gray scale and this elastography uh, image. Okay, this is elastography. Okay. The red. What what is what is elastography as so here? Uh, elastography the concept it, concept of elastography it means measurement of uh, uh, pressure or uh, the elasticity or the stiffness of the lesion by two mechanism either pressure could uh, call the strain or mm -hmm. shear wave elastography excellent 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 well done okay so elastography it is the same concept of bulbation on clinical evaluation. When you bulbate a malignant lesion, you will feel it as 
it's harder compared to the benign lesions. Uh, elastography having the same concept using the ultrasound machines, giving okay force okay to the lesions and to see how it moves, how it displays, and measure this displacement okay or movement that to estimate it is stiffness. It is additional pitch or additional technique to ultrasound measure the lesion fairness or stiffness or deformations relative to background of breast tissue after applying a force. Strain, it means tissue compression and motion. Okay? As you mentioned, there are two techniques. And with either technique, acoustic information regarding lesion stiffness is, is converted into black and white or color scaled image, okay? Superimposed on top of the moist image. And if you look here for this image, I like it. I love it. I found it in the literature and I love it. You see, if you imagine this is a breast and here the lesions, by applying force here, okay, the tissue, all tissue, definitely it will move the breast tissue as well as uh, the lesion inside the breast tissue, okay? The, what is the role of elastography? So here, how it can help us in evaluation of breast lesions and when we should use it? Uh, elastography, it means the stiff, the malignant uh, goes with a stiff, a stiff uh, lesion. Benign is uh, less stiff mm -hmm. uh, and graded from one to five. Mm -hmm. How how it is helpful? Uh, before before the interpretation. Before before interpretation, mm -hmm. it helps in, uh, uh, like uh, mass with a heavy posterior shadowing on elastography uh, it, dem it uh, demonstrates the margin the margin the whole margin of the lesion okay 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 generally generally ultrasound is good modality uh, with relatively good sensitivity but lower specificity okay so one of the methods that improve ultrasound specificity is elastography. Usually is recommended to be used for equivocal lesions. You see, if the lesions is suspicious, regardless of elastography has to be biopsied. If it is simple cyst, no need to do elastography. Typically benign, that means uh, is benign lesions, but for equivocal lesions like BIRAT3 and BIRAT4A, you want to, uh, yani you don't like to follow lesion for six months, okay? And then after that, you find no need for this follow-up or the lesion is suspicious, you have to upgrade it to, to, to BIRAT4 or you have to downgrade it to BIRAT2. And the same for BIRAT4. For a, you want to, you don't like to do uh, interventions for benign lesions, and at the same time, you want to maintain or to enhance cancer detections. So, for equivocal lesions, we need to use elastography to help us to either upgrade or downgrade lesions. Okay. And it really uh, substantially improve the capability of ultrasound differentiating malignant from benign lesions. Okay. And um, because of distinction between soft and hard lesions provided by elastography, the clinician can direct the biopsy needle to the more suspicious component within a particular press lesions, 
okay? It can decide which part of the lesion is more suspicious that they can take biopsy from that lesion. And as you mentioned, uh, elastography features is stiffness, and the more stiff, the more suspicious or more malignant, and the softer usually are benign lesion with some uh, little overlap. And there are also other features for interpretations of the elastography regarding strain ratio, size ratio, shape, homogeneity, and uh, as you you mentioned the maximum uh, stiffness, okay? Huh. If you look for this image, if you look for the gray scale, you can see there is, there might be a lesion here. Many time while scanning the breast, mm. we have been faced by something like that. Is it a real lesion? Is it not a real lesion? Is it a suspicious mm. lesion? Mm. It is not very mm. sharply demarcated, not clearly no. defined uh, a true lesion with true boundaries. But by putting, activate the elastography, you see, you can see here this. Uh, this is a shear wave elastography demonstrate a non homogeneous area, okay, large area of hard lesions in a case of malignancy. So in this case, definitely elastography helping us. This, if you look, this is a circumscribed lesions, is homogeneous, but not much, not very typical of fibroadenoma, not very typical, okay? But uh, reported or classified as BIRA3. For me, I don't know. But I'll not put it three, I'll put it at least four A. By putting, okay, by activating a shear wave elastography, the lesion itself is not stiff, but the surrounding parenchyma uh, demonstrate stiffness. For that, biopsy performed and revealed invasive ductal carcinoma. So in this type of equivocal lesions, uh, elastography is really helpful. And regarding elastography, there is one commonest technique used, which is strain or static elastography. And uh, the other one is a shear wave elastography. The strain elastography uh, for which they use external force. How you use the external force? This is a transducer, okay? And the operator doing ultrasound using a manual compression, okay? Giving compression to the, uh, on the transducer, okay? Uh, and that is why it will be operator dependent, see? because you might give more pressure, give less pressure, and it should be an appropriate degree of compression. Otherwise, it will not give a favorable result. Some, they mentioned that it has to be minimal surface pressure. Others, they said, if it is also very minimal, it might not give an optimum result. So it has to be optimized. And this is subjective. See, it can differ from one operator to another. It is not like in the B mode, the compression uh, needed in the B mode image. Flattening of the structures like in the B mode might result in loss, complete loss of signal in E mode. Okay, but so it depends. And that is why some of the uh, machines or manufacturers, they rely on the cardiac and respiratory motion rather than the external force compression, manual compression by the operator. And 
generally, generally strain elastography giving a qualitative information. Okay, in general, giving us a qualitative the measuring the deformability of a lesions or stiffness, estimating the stiffness of the lesion either in black and white or in a color coded image. But There is one method of measuring the ratio of the lesions stiffness to the uh, stiffness of the adjacent normal fibroglandular parenchyma, uh, giving a ratio, they call it strain ratio. And in this case, it will be a semi-quantitative uh, method. And generally, benign lesion have lower ratio comparison uh, to malignant one. Here, this is a transducer. While applying the pressures, okay, uh, the benign lesions giving more uh, compressibility, more strainable, or more deformity, while the malignant one is not. Okay. What about these lesions? Here, this is strain elastography, compressing the lesions. We are compressing these lesions. Huh. What is the result? What about these lesions? How the we lesion can read is, it? How uh, we can read it? Uh, hard, totally hard lesion. Abir? Yes. Excellent. Well done. According yes. to the color map. Yes. Yes. The lesion, not only the lesion, the lesion and the surrounding parenchyma. Because the lesion on the E uh, elastography image is larger than the gray mod image. Yeah. Okay. That is why the lesion is complete. The whole lesion is hard as well as the surrounding parenchyma. So this is scale. It will be scale. The maximum stiffness. It will be grade or scale five. 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 Scale five, you see, does not show any deformability or stiffness, uh, or, or uh, I mean, it is a stiff lesions as well as surrounding parenchyma. This is the uh, quantitative or semi quantitative uh, strain ratio. You see, they measure it the uh, elasticity of the lesion as well as elasticity of the fat far from the lesions in a normal tissue and the ratio uh, if it is uh, high it will be malignant and if it is uh, benign lesion will give a mild or a small ratio also they can use the size of the lesions in both uh, B mode as well as in elastography. Add in this case, what is the difference between the two? In this case, in the elastography, the lesion is increase in size, larger, larger, and even the shape of the lesion is different and textures and everything. So this is malignant. Uh, a suspicious. This is usually stiff lesion, while as seen usually is malignancy, and with a benign lesion, usually the same size or even less. Okay, same shape and same size. Okay, and the, in combined O2 uh, correlation methods of strain elastography, the amount of lesion deformability or elasticity uh, of the lesion uh, relative to the surrounding uh, normal tissue displayed in color coded uh, scales from one to five. The, usually the softest okay, uh, tissue, it uh, means that the greatest strain uh, is red, while the hardest no strain is blue, and the average strain is green, which is green, usually the press 
tissue uh, having the average uh, strain. For score one or scale one, okay, which is usually represent benign lesions, there is no signal, uh, elastography signals, the lesions same as the surrounding parenchyma. The entire hypochoic area is soft, okay? There is nothing seen, okay? Having green, same as the surrounding normal breast tissue, no signal. While in scale two, the majority or predominantly is green, like the normal tissue, but few areas, okay? randomly distributed seen here as blue or heart representing heart giving what is called the mosaic appearance and from here they start to say most of the lesion in these are benign that is why they consider it as a probably benign, a probably benign lesion not like when one is benign, but two is a probably benign lesions, okay? When we go for score three, huh, you will see most of the center of the lesions, okay, is hard. The central portion is hard, while the peripheral portion of the lesion, as, as you see here in the... Um, in this image, you see, it is only central and the peripheral is free, is not, is not uh, the same, it is demonstrating average strain, green, like the normal press tissue. And this is scale three. And how we could know this is uh, part of the lesions. If it is a lesion is hard, but smaller than the gray scale, that means it is very free, it's not hard. This is three, and this is usually uh, they consider it as equivocal. Okay, the cut short for benign versus malignant. It is an equivocal, it depends. See, you might proceed for uh, biopsy for the viral, uh, for the scale three. While scale four is suspicious, you see, and the lesion, the whole lesion is hard, but usually equal to the gray scale. But when it is larger than gray scales, even the surrounding parenchyma is also hard, you see. And this is highly suggestive of malignancy, like Bayrat. Barat 4 are suggestive of malignancy uh, or suspicious for malignancy, and Barat 5 is highly suggestive of malignancy. And we'll see later in an interpretation how to use it to upgrade and downgrade the lesions. If it is Barat 3, and we find elastography, which is scale to upgrade the lesion and downgrading the lesions. And if you look here for this, you have blue, green, and red artifact. Blue, green, and red. This is a typical, typical, or specific, okay? A specific pattern seen with a simple system. Okay? It is like the posterior enhancement and edge shadowing of grayscale artifacts of a simple cyst. But also in the white and uh, uh, black image, you'll see the pulse eye, typical pulse eye, pulse eye. The lesion is a smaller than gray scale and demonstrate this typical appearance of pulse eye of a cyst. Classic cyst appearance in the emote, pulse eye within the cyst and as well as Posterior to the cyst or distal to the cyst, you will find this strain enhancement. You see, this is typical of a cyst. And this we have seen earlier. This is 
the blue, green, and red artifacts, BGR, okay? But not always, you might see it, you see, like this. This is also cyst having softest red color, you see, in, is it a strain or shear wave uh, elastography? So here? Shear wave elastography. This shear wave? How come? Yeah. No. No, it is not a shear wave. Why? Why it is not a shear wave? This is strain elastography. I'll let you know why. Look, it is red. It is red, complete red color. Okay. This lesion is hard. And this lesion is hard. And both are strain elastography. What is the difference between the two? What is the difference? In this case, they use the blue color. Reversing of the color map. Blue, they reverse, they switch the map. The color map is being switched. But if you look here, this is Hitachi and this is Semin. So elastography image is encoded in color or grayscale depending on the device used. And we have to be aware about this. And they can switch the map between uh, blue and red for the hard lesions in strain elastography. However, cannot be switched for shear wave elastography. Shear wave hard is always red. And this lesion is cyst and appear as red, completely red. And here, this is the hard is blue and red is soft. So definitely this is not shear wave. Is it clear, Suher? No. Huh? Ma wa fallai. يعني انا بج... يعني الكلر كود كيف يعني اعمل له سويتش و... ما فهمت صراحه كده نوت نوت يو اوكي يو ويل فايند ذا ماشين ات ديبند ذس هيتاشي ماشين دي هاف ذا هارد از بلو اند سوفت از ريد نا هيتاشي اند ذس ماشين از سيمين دي يوز ذا هارد از ريد and the blue is soft. You got my point? Yes. The, you will look for the machine, how they used the color map. And from machine to machine, the strain color map uh, is different. Okay? Okay. But for elastography, for, for the shear wave, it is not. They are not everywhere in the world, lead, okay? They are using the red in a shear wave to reflect for the hard lesions or stiff lesions. If you have seen red, okay, and is not stiff, that means this is not a shear wave elastography. Yes. You got the point, okay? Yeah. Okay. What is a shear wave elastography? We said the strain is a static elastography and is uh, uh, operator dependent because uh, depend on using pressure or compression by the transducer, you see, and it's relatively subjective. But the shear wave elastography, it doesn't use external force. It, it, it uses an internal force, internal force from the transducers. You see, high intensity ultrasound pulse. If you look as if 
you look for this, okay? Water, look for this drop of water. Don't see the vertical effect down. Look how this transversely moving ripples of water as effect of this drop of water. Can you imagine this? This drop of water result in this ripples, okay, of water moving transversely. This is the same as the shear wave elastography. Acoustic, automatic acoustic radiation force or high intensity ultrasound pulse produced by or generated by the transducer when you activate the E mode. You just activate the bottom of the E mode in the machine, then the transducer will send high in intensity ultrasound pulse. This high intensity ultrasound pulse, when reach the tissue, result in transverse oriented shear waves. You see, moving transversely like that ripples of water. The movement of these waves, okay, depend on the tissues. The faster the movement, the hardest the tissue, the more malignant. And then the ultrasound measure the speed of these horizontal waves. That is why it is a quantitative elasticity parameters. The shear wave is a quantitative and the measurement of these okay uh, parameters uh, in a meter per second or in a kilo pascals a unit of the pressures and you will see here number when you have seen numbers in the color map that means you are dealing with the shear wave elastography, not dealing with the strenuous elastography. You see? The quantitative elastography is a shear wave elastography. You will see here the kilopascal, okay? This is, and you will see here the red with the highest uh, markers with the highest kilopascal. And we said that the measurements or the traveling, the fastest or the highest in a hardest. It means hardest tissue. It means more suspicious tissue, more stiff. You got the point now. So you will see always red with, okay, with highest number of kilopascal. And generally, the lower number are for 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 uh, soft uh, lesions and higher uh, for for uh, stiff. And they used in general number of eighty as uh, a cut short between the two. But sometimes they decrease it. Still, there are many studies decrease it to twenty like that. You see, but you can take it as a whole. Okay, so uh, still, when you look for this image, you can read this lesion is red, like in the strain image, having qualitative measurements for the color map without measuring exactly the kilopascal, just by looking for the color map, you can get also a qualitative uh, measurement or qualitative information for the shear wave elastography. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. Since it is clear, uh, there are two examples here. Okay, tell me about these examples. Mm -hmm. For this one, is it a uh, strain or a shear wave elastography? So here, the second uh -huh. one, it will be for Abir, but the first one for you, so here. Uh, yes, this is uh, represent uh, 
Is it strain or shear wave elastography? What do you think? What do you think? Okay, okay, we can. Coming back, to which is evaluate the lesion. Evaluate the lesion. How you are going to evaluate? Shear wave elastograph. Excellent. Well done. Why it is shear wave? Because uh, this is a uh, represent in grayscale. It's a suspicious lesion. Suspicious. Uh, uh -huh. And in in the in the elastography. In the elastography, more, uh, representing uh, uh, not not a uh, red. So this is a uh, blue, and blue represent hard component of the lesion. So it is shear wave elastograph. Uh, but you got a what? Is it soft? Vice versa. Is it a soft? No, but I know he ashan hard, yani not red. Yeah, but you have still you have mixed, you have mixed yes. so yellow Central. and red. Can you go? Can you go here? Look for the yellow. Is above hundred. The yellow. The yellow is above 100. Uh -huh. Yes. And even, and green is borderline. You yes. See? Mm -hmm. Only, only the blue is soft. It's hard. The green is borderline and the yellow is hard. Uh, and the red is the more, is the stiffest. Stiff, yes, so hard, here, yes. here you have stiff lesions and mm -hmm. these more stiffest part, it is mm -hmm. heterogeneous. Heterogeneous and larger, larger than here. The dysmoblastic reaction we have seen in grayscale is included in elastography here. That is why, since it is it is uh, it's suspicious findings, it looks uh, it's it's going more with a shear wave elastography. Excellent. So this is shear wave. Abir, what about the other one? Mm -hmm. How elastic? The bottom, the bottom lesion uh, in the gray scale, it showed uh, complex, case, cystic, huh? complex cystic mass with posterior uh, acoustic enhancement. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, well with, uh, uh, how how elastography uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. How elastography? Uh, this shear wave elastography showed that. Uh, Why you say uh, the shear wave? Why you say the, the shear lesion uh, is totally soft, and the uh, surrounding. Uh huh. And why? Why you the say the barcode in the image there is numbers and it's not clear, Excellent. but I think the Excellent. there is Excellent. The there are numbers. There are numbers since there are numbers in the color map, so we are dealing with. A shear wave, excellent, well done. So we are dealing with a shear wave. That means this color, that means this color represent, uh -huh. the blue color here represents. Uh, so, soft tissue, even the, the surrounding tissue soft. is soft. Totally represent soft. Represent the complete soft. So, so, so the nodule is, the nodule is, this, this uh, is, uh, Presenting the green, green color, color, I think, color borderline. It is, it is blue. It is soft. Um. Okay. It is soft. Even, even the nodule is completely soft. So that means this most likely it will be in a specific secretion or benign lesions. You see, uh, but why? Uh, okay. Why here there is no signal? Why here there is no signal? There is signal void here. Uh, it, uh, because it's a cystic fluid, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's um, the content of the cyst itself. But but we have seen we have seen a cyst up, up uh, giving pulse eye and seeing as red and this and that. Why here it is signal void? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> yes, you don't know because fluid does not propagate the shear waves. Okay. Okay. That 
the cyst, it will give signal void in a shear wave, unlike in a strain, okay? And your case is a complex cyst with adherent debris. You see, this is, they found it as adherent debris only. The elastography um, downgrade the lesions from being to be suspicious, okay? Mm -hmm. It's only uh, a Dr. Rabab, regarding this case, uh, I could see a small, tiny area in the wall of the cyst. Uh, uh, its color is, is green or light green. Uh, should I take it or I have to neglect it because it is so tiny? In, no, in no, the they, consider it, they consider it soft. In generally, okay. because the predominant, predominantly is just the blue, you see? So they consider it and they found it just a complex system. This from the little. Okay. Thank uh, you, Dr. Okay. And your Lovely. case. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. complete, complete, complete. Complete what? La, Timmy, Kalami, Kana, Adik, so Alibad. Okay, okay, regarding your case, uh, Suhair, you see, this is a lesion, is only in gray scale. Is 0 0.6 by 0 0.4 in distinct hypocoic uh, heterogeneous mass. In a shear wave, you see demonstrate stiff mass indicated by red and yellow color. Because we mentioned that a yellow color in shear wave is also stiff, but the red color is the is stiffest, you see? And it appears larger than grayscale. The final pathological evaluation was 1.6 by 1.6 invasive lobular carcinoma. So the more precisable size is uh, in a shear wave more than, more accurate than in the gray scale. Okay, look for the, for, for the lesions in the gray scale and in the biopsy result. Following more, the elastography. And as we mentioned, uh, your case, uh, the complex cyst, and this is definitely borderline. This is by rat 4 a So here is the shear wave elastography helping us in downgrading the lesions. Huh? I what for the Lia Medina? Blue-gray, blue-green, red sign, I'll call it the cyst, matter the kind of strain. قبل لما عملنا السكيلز حقت الليجنز yes the previous cyst it was a strain yes these those who were strain strain elastomer sign دي بتكون في الاسترين طوالي this were uh, yes in 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 a shear wave they said that in a shear wave the fluid does not propagate a shear wave okay and okay. it appear I, Mm -hmm. It appears as, as it is found in the literature, the cyst in a shear wave giving a signal void. Okay. Okay. But in uh -huh. a, but in strain, in a strain, either be soft, okay, homogeneous mm -hmm. soft, either blue or red, mm -hmm. according to the color map. Or in, okay. in in black and white give the typical pulse eye and enhance posterior elas uh, elastic shadow or elastic signal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, in the color uh, color coded, give the blue, green, red sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let us see to make sure. Yes, blue, green, red. Yes, blue, green, red. Big uh, B BGR, BGR. You see the BGR sign. These all are strain. Here, this is the strain. In a strain, this is classic the bull's eye and apparent strain enhancement distal. This one, like posterior enhancement, same as posterior enhancement, and smaller. And here, the BGR, and here, uh, giving complete soft. These all are strains. But in the shear wave, it's usually signal void, as they mentioned. Okay. Nice. Okay, tamam. Uh, 
دكتور رباب معليش عندي سؤال في الكيس الفاتح حقت دكتور سهير انا كيف اقدر اتاكد انه يعني ما فهمت النقطه ليه انت كنت بتقولي انه لازم دي تكون شير ويف يعني الكيس الاولى بتاعه سهير This one or the previous? أقدر... This one. Uh, this one. أيوة. ال ال case the above. Uh, أيوة. Yes. كيف he, أقدر... Here, here I suspect I suspect to be a shear wave because I could see the lesion larger. First of all, the lesion here is suspicious in the gray أيوة. scale. And I have seen the lesion larger, okay, than in elastography than in the gray scale. So. Since I have seen the lesion larger, more heterogeneous and different in shape. Look here, the lesion look as if it is rounded. Here it is more irregular and transversely Transverse. oriented rather than. There is some, a lot of difference, which is going with more suspicious lesions, more malignant. So I expect, Ayo. I expect to be stiff and since Ayo. the stiffness, is red, blue, is, sorry, is yellow and red. That going mostly with, probably, yeah, yeah, mostly with the shear waves. Because, because uh, uh, in the strain is not a yellow. If you look here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. look, for color, look for the color here. Uh, mostly, mostly green, blue, green, these colors. Okay. But here, look here, uh, red, then yellow, yeah. then mm -hmm. green, then the blue. Okay. And even the okay. green is borderline. The green here is borderline. It is mm -hmm. around 70 to 80, okay? And the yellow is above, above 100. That is why I suspect, I suspect this is more, more for the shear waves, okay? That is okay. Why just, well, I'm trying to analyze, make use of the uh, information we studied together, okay? But it is okay. not, it's not any, uh, either, you might find something, you see, at, uh, here, the color map, it might reflect for you what is going on. Okay. Okay, hint. Take, yeah. the, take this uh, one. Okay, um, so this um, a gray scale and- Tell me the difference with... between the two. Okay. Uh, the first case um, on the left, Type in the gray scale, there is a high. When, 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 sorry, sorry, you said the uh huh? You have uh, two, two, two studies, you have two, two, two images, yes. Yes. Uh, two lesions, we have two lesions here. Uh, yes. So you are talking about which one? First, uh, on the left side of the screen, the longitudinal one, uh, each image beside the, uh, each other. Uh, okay, which one? Okay, so uh, there is a hypo e before there is before before there is a hypo, huh? You are talking about which type of elastography? Shear wave, shear wave elastography. As the the, the map is uh, uh, with numbers with kilopascals. So uh, there is the map for this. You are talking about this or this one? Aha, uh -huh. okay, this have a separate this, map. Okay, okay. Or this one? Yeah. Yes, this one. This one, I didn't see the map, okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, the, um, uh -huh. the, the giga. This is uh, strain. Excellent, well done. Why it is strain? The heart, uh, the heart is uh, blue. And always the shear waves, the hard is, is red. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah, because yes, in the map. Yes, the, the heart yes. is blue. Yeah, here the heart, the heart is blue, that means it's red. Okay, yes. excellent. 
Okay, so the excellent. It shows, uh, excellent. It shows well hard is blue. That means we are dealing with stress. Mm -hmm. A hypo, a coexclusion that uh, proves to be uh, hard with the strain elastography. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Well done. Okay. In the in the other one is the shear wave. Uh -huh. It is uh, with numbers and uh, scale bascals. The the most malignant or the most suspicious is uh, red one forty four, and the uh -huh. legion uh, is. Uh -huh. um, is blue, it's a hypocoic legion, um, irregular. It's iso, this is isocoic lobulated lesions. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, uh -huh. isocoic lobulated. With posterior enhancement. enhancement. Yes, uh -huh. and uh, it is blue. Completely uh -huh. blue like it's the blue. surrounding printing okay. tissue. So it's a, it's a benign lesion. It's soft, yes. So yeah. that is why I brought this. Both are fibroadenoma. But this fibroadenoma is hard, while this fibroadenoma is soft. You see? Both are a fibroadenoma. The mean stiffness here, 30, only 30 kilopascal, okay? Okay, uh, now we complete the elastography. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So, uh, still we are talking about the ultrasound techniques or the modern ultrasound facilities, uh, including uh, harmonic imaging. So what is harmonic imaging? And the, uh, the transducer, okay, potentially uh, can potentially provide higher image quality uh, than those with the conventional imaging by filtering the harmonic frequencies, okay? Retaining from the tissue, selecting the higher frequencies to give the image. So increasing the signal to noise ratio. So this can decrease many artifacts, reverberation, speckles, and so forth, and as well as improving the lateral resolution and contrast resolutions. As you have seen in this case, this uh, a lady, 58 year old or 56, having remote history of left breast cancer presented with mammographic eight millimeter uh, mass. And the same location on ultrasound, barely seen isochoic lesion here. We are not sure, so it's questionable. We cannot be sure that it is a fat lobule or a true lesion. But by using harmonics, you see, imaging definitely, it provides better image, improve the specificity, the sensitivity as well as the specificity, the conspicuity of the lesion first, okay? And then uh, characterizations of the lesions and ultrasound guided biopsy performed, proven to be a grade two DCIS, okay? So it's really helpful. And uh, this is the image, which one with harmonics and which one is conventional ultrasound, huh? What do you expect? Uh, the A is the harmonic. Excellent, why? Um, the resolution of the image is better and even the, the posterior uh, characteristics of the legion, the, the, the enhancement is better. Yes, the reverberation, 
the reverberation artifacts, you see, the low frequency reverberation artifacts in the hypothesis eliminated, and the borders of the lesion is sharply demarcated, as well as the speckles uh, artifacts in the image. So it reduced artifactual echoes, okay, uh, including the reverberation internal echoes or superficial reverberation echoes inside the system okay but we have to be cautious while using harmonics why we don't like okay to eliminate internal echoes within a soft tissue masses and to read it as a cyst this is one issue also if you look here what is the difference between the posterior aspect of the image in harmonics and in the image without harmonics Mm -hmm. uh, the the enhancement is is more in the harmonics the posterior enhancement i'm not talking about posterior uh, no um, not not seen here yes why what do you think we said is selecting the high higher frequencies that it will be more superficial that means the deeper structures will not be much evaluated by harmonics. When we use the harmonics, we could not see the deep part of the rest. So we have to be cautious to use the harmonics and then to take it off, turn it off, turn it on and take it off uh, uh, to evaluate the whole studies. Okay. Regarding spatial compounding and speckle reductions, what is spatial compounding? If you look here, this is a conventional uh, ultrasound transducer, and this is the spatial compounding. What do you think the difference between the two? In conventional standard ultrasound traditionally send and receive ultrasound signal in a single direction perpendicular to the long axis of the transducer like this but the special compounding is electronic beam steering is a technology that acquire multiple frame from different steering angles and combine this image. So it utilizes electronic beam steering, acquire multiple images from different angles while the transducer in a static okay, positions. These images, not because we are moving the transducer, in the same transducer, the transducer itself, itself having the capability of sending and receiving uh different frames imaging frames okay or multiple imaging frame from different angles then a single composite image okay in a real time uh obtained by averaging these frames as a result of this cancelled the artifacts the most important of this process is cancelling the artifact to become less apparent. So it will enhance the normal or real structure echoes, okay, but reduce the artifacts. By this, definitely it will improve the conspicuity of the image. It will enhance the margin definitions of the uh, uh, the lesions, okay, uh, especially the lateral and posterior margin of the lesions, uh, including the speculations and uh, echogenic uh, halo and these things, you see, and lateral borders, as well as improved visualization of micro and architectural distortions. And 
also reducing artifactual echoes like speckles and other spurious noises. However, not only that, even the beneficial artifacts like posterior enhancement and acoustic shadowing characteristic of the lesions can also be reduced by special compounding. So we have to be cautious, okay, to use it also on and off to characterize a lesions. And the artifacts become less apparent and true structures uh, are better visualized so it will reduce the noise and speckles and improve resolution in the center of the image. These are two examples. Look for these lesions here and the lesion here. And look for this lesion and see it here. Which one with, uh, with special compounding and which one without? Which image with special compounding? Image C and A yeah, are with special compounding. Okay. Abir, which yeah. one? Which one? Image C and image F. Excellent. Why? Why? Um, because I could uh, the I could um, see uh, the boundaries of the lesion. In Excellent. image E, the posterior. Uh, feature of the lesion couldn't be identified. Yes. While in yes. NHF, I could see the posterior feature Excellent. of the lesion. Yes. First of all, this is more grainy. This image are more grainy. You see? The whole image is more grainy, more speckles being eliminated or canceled in this image, this without a lot of artifact, even the posterior shadowing is almost, almost disappeared. And the margins here are much better visualized than in this image. So these are with special compounding. The margin confidently interpreted with special compounding. However, the posterior feature will be less apparent. So we have to use it uh, to turn it on and off. Okay. What about this lesion? What about this lesion? See, yeah, these two image. Which one with special compounding and which one without? Uh, I think uh, image B is a special compound. Which one? B. Uh -huh. which, which, one, which one is less noisy? Which one without the speckles? Remove the speckles, delineate the margins, look for the cyst margins in which image the margin much well visualized smooth a, uh? i think a is more smooth outlines so the one with special compounding it will be the less artifactual image and if you look for the posterior enhancement yes. see the posterior enhancement how it appear here and look for the posterior enhancement here, very faint. So, so A, mm. utilize compounding and B without. I noticed okay. that the background is uh, more more uh, canceled or uh, less in B. So I think B is the using pink compound or so. No. The posterior. Structures are oh, the which one, which image is grainy? No, the whole the whole B image, the whole ultrasound. Is grainy. Which B is one grainy. showing the speckles? Which B. one give a B? So we said that special compounding remove artifacts, remove uh -huh. the speckles, 
Including all artifacts, all artifacts. Alas, remove bias. Including the posterior shadowing and posterior enhancement. And if you compare the cyst here, which image demonstrate more posterior enhancement? The posterior enhancement with more appreciable and larger in the in B, yes? Yes. I... So it reduced in A. So the ME with special compound is A. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it give clean margin without reverberation, but reduce the posterior enhancement characteristic of a cyst. This is another look how this is noisy image and this is compounding. You see, remove the speckles. Okay. Increase resolution, eliminate artifact and eliminate shadowing. Mm -hmm. Even look here, look for this area. You don't know what is going on. You see here, the image is much clearer. Yeah. And look for the border of the lesions here and in the in the other image. And look for this one. Look for the lesion here and look for the, the lesion. Look for the whole image, how it is grainy here. Yeah. And, yeah. and yes. how it's moving in this yes. special compounding. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. What about the speckle reductions? The speckle reductions, it is also a real-time post-processing technique. Okay, what is the speckles? We described in the previous image, we said the speckles are artifacts. Which image having the speckles in this A or B? Which one demonstrates speckles artifacts? Uh, image A. Image A. Image A. Yes. Image A is grainy. Image A. Speckles is a granular appearance, okay? The granular appearance, otherwise the fat should be homogeneous, okay? It is generated by microstructure, microstructures showing this grainy appearance, okay? It can, it, it can affect the contrast and reduce visibility of the lesions. As you have seen here, you might say this like this, like this. Huh? It will be difficult to characterize or to pick up allegiance, not like in this image. So the speckles will affect the interpretation of the image, will affect the visualization of the lesion. It will mask small uh, uh, differences in the level of gray. Okay, uh, speckle reduction is a real time post processing technique. This algorithm provides significant reductions in speckles or result in smoothening of the regions and it enhance the contrast resolutions by increasing signal to noise ratio and then improve the margin definitions, okay? So the lesions margin, it will be very clear with speckle reductions. Improve detect depictions of internal structures of the solid lesions, as well as micro calcification. It can be used uh, simultaneously with uh, special compounding, or it is a complementary. Uh, it, it can be complementary to special compounding and can be used simultaneously okay and this image as you mentioned this is with speckles and this be using the speckle reduction technique okay and for this again look for the image here hmm? how it is noisy how it is grainy with the speckles and when they remove the speckles okay with the speckle reductions look for the image, how it looks. So 
the spec reduction does not eliminate any information. Diagnostic criteria preserved, unlike in special compounding. Okay. However, result in significant reduction in speckles, smoothening of the region while maintaining or enhance the edge or border of allegiance. Huh? Do you have a question? Okay. Uh, one technique is speed of sound imaging. What is the speed of sounding? As you know, the speed of ultrasound or the sound variable according to the tissue, to the tissue of the body. You agree? It varies, yes. it varies according to the tissue type. Yes. And it is slower in fat than in a dense breast. It is about 1430 to 1470 milli, uh, meter per second uh, for the fat, while it is uh, faster for the dense breast. Conventional ultrasound machine, they have you fixed uniform speed for all tissue, 1540, 1054 meter per second, for all tissue travel throughout the body. So this definitely will affect mm, uh, uh, structures like breast having variable tissues, fat or dense or mixed, and definitely will clearly impact the resolution of the image. So to correct this, um, Problem: the development of modern ultrasound machines. They optimize, okay? They they have a facility to optimize the transducer according to the tissue component, whatever the breast is fatty, mixed, or dense breast. So by optimizing the transducer uh, speed, okay, then it will improve the lateral resolution definitely, better characterization of tissue interface, delineate lesion margins better, and definitely it will be useful to identify subtle hypochoic lesions surrounded by a fatty breast, like in harmonics as well as picking of micro calcification. Let us see examples here. This two image. What do you think which one with corrected speed and which one is with the conventional speed? Which one is more the margin of the lesion more clear? And the right one. The, one the, right. the spicules is the right, definitely the better resolutions in the right. Look for the lesions, how the margins, how the yeah. speculars could be appreciable, okay? Not like this one. In this image, okay, generated with a conventional transducer, having mm -hmm. the uniform uh, speed, 1540. But this one use the new, new machines with corrected speed of sound for breast tissue. It give nice, very accurate, high resolution image, okay? Good delineations of lesion borders and resolution even of the fine specules. Okay. Almost, we, we went through, um, the ultrasound modern facilities and 
let us go for next step. What are the ultrasound advantages? As you know, there are many, many, many advantages. The most important, non-ionizing, accessibility of ultrasound, relatively low cost, quick, unique opportunity for real time uh, for guidance of needle biopsy, easy approach. If we find a lesion, easy to be uh, uh, biopsied using the ultrasound and so forth. There are many, many, many uh, advantages of ultrasound. What are the disadvantages of ultrasound? Uh -huh. Operator dependent, depends on the skill of the operator. Excellent. You mentioned the most important. So, first, uh, ultrasound, we can mention limitations. First, then go for the most important disadvantages. There are limitations for ultrasound that provide less anatomic details than uh, pressed MRI does not replace a mammography. Uh, the study quality is limited by huge breast, extremely dense glandular press. If the patient uh, on pain, in pain, I mean, having inflammatory conditions or many cancer might not visible on ultrasound result in neg negative, false negative result and high false positive uh, ultrasound results in a lot of uh, biopsies okay, tend out to be uh, non-cancerous lesions, okay. Can you tell me the difference between these lesions? What is the difference between the two lesions? I think the angle. Who is talking? To here. What is the angle? Uh, the lesion on uh, the left one, uh, it is more perpendicular, and uh, the on the right one, it is obliquely. I think. Okay, tell me the characters of the lesion. Grade each lesion. If uh, classify each lesion according to virus. Uh, on the left one, it is uh, microlobulated. Uh, Partially indistinct, indistinct margin, representing 4B. Which one? On the left one. This one? No. This one? Yes. Partially indistinct lesion on the right, on the lateral side. Mm -hmm. Microlobulated. Where is the microlobulation? It has a more than, more than lobuli and if he, well, I'm macro-related, sorry. Uh, what about this one? This irregular, irregular margin, uh, micro-lobulated. Mm -hmm. This uh, micro-lobulated, angulated, indistinct. Angular margin, yes. And even here, fine spicules can spicules. be visualized. This is yes. almost, almost by rat. Five. By rat five. Mm -hmm. You will give this by rat. Four B. Four B. It's okay, accept it, accept it, 4B, 4A, yes. Someone, he might say three, it is mostly appear, mostly circumscribed, yes. Here might be an angular border, here may be this indistinct, like yes. this. So, yes, yes. Uh, but at least not the same grade. You will not grade it at the same. If I'll tell you, this is the same lesions. This one is the, is this one. What does it mean? What does it mean? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Angle, if I'll angle. tell you this lesion is the same as this lesion. Yes, difference in the angle, I think. 
What does it mean the difference in the angle? يعني أنا خطة البروب كده خطاه يعني بيربنديكلر ولما كده خطاه ب ب بزاوية تانية. Okay, okay. So you mean the scanning technique of the legions? If I the image in the left is less grainy. Okay, this one, this done by one operator and this one performed mm -hmm. by another operator. Same so, machine. What does it mean? Same machine. Skills different. Same setting. Yes. Hint mentioned uh, the major disadvantage of ultrasound is dependence. Yes. So this one less expert than this one. Uh huh. Mammography suspicious lesion. Evaluated by less expert. Okay. Ultrasound technologist obtaining this lesion. If you give it highest grade, you will give it four B. But when re scanned by the senior radiologist, sweeping throughout the margins of the lesions, look how the lesion is suspicious, concordant with mammography findings. Okay, when is press ultrasound contraindicated? Any contraindication for ultrasound? Can you imagine a contraindication when? Um, in case uh, the skin overlying the breast is uh, extremely ulcerated or... Um... No, we have done a lot of ultrasound. In case of for forgetting, forgetting about, for inflammatory process. Yeah, in forgetting we have done a lot of cases of fungating tumors with ultrasound. According to the previous examples, mm. could you imagine when no. ultrasound is contraindicated? No contraindication. Yes. Mm. Ultrasound inherently operate they're dependent and press ultrasound even more so, thus a major contraindication would be inadequate operator experience. This is a contraindicator, indications for ultrasound. Press ultrasound. You got it? Inadequate yeah. operator experience. This is the only contraindication for press ultrasound. Not related to the patient. It is related to the operator. So, as you know, ultrasound is operator dependent. It depends on the experience of the person performing the ultrasound. It needs meticulous attenuation, sorry, meticulous attention to scanning technique and knowledge of various technical options. We describe a lot of technical options and how it can help us for doing press ultrasound. We have to know a lot of technical options, okay, that can help us to optimize uh, an accurate ultrasound image, okay, to improve both sensitivity and specificity. And generally, the ultrasound press can be performed by technologist or radiologist. Okay. However, it should be interpreted by the radiologist. But it is preferable for the radiologist to perform press ultrasound. Why? Because definitely real-time scanning is not like the static image. 
it provides a lot of opportunity that improve the interpretation skills. Okay, it prevent it permit, sorry, it permit details lesion analysis compared to the static images regarding subtle irregularity as you have seen in distinct margins. Okay, it will be definitely well appreciated on real time, like you have seen an aesthetic one. It will eliminate the artifact as you have seen. Subtle architectural distortion, you will see definitely on real time, you might not be appreciated on static image. Okay. Also, it will allow the operator to assess lesion mobility and to make sure you are scanning the clinical, uh, the targeting the clinical concern or the patient concerning lesions. Okay, because there is a communications interactive process it will be. You can better assess the location of the lesion by yourself and the relation of the lesion to the other structures. You will make sure how the lesion is far from the nipple, how the lesions reaching the pectoralis muscle or the chest wall while you are scanning. And as we mentioned, interactive, you can talk to the patients. Uh, uh, you, you make sure, is it tender, not tender, that you are talking about the same lesion. This is the, the clinical concern or the patient concern. It is the same of the lesions on mammography. And the lesion you have seen, you are talking about all these things it will be provided if you are going yourself and scanning the patient, not just looking at static image in the back system uh, to be reported. And definitely it will be more easy for you to make sure you are talking the same correlate that what you have seen on ultrasound with what you have seen on mammography and MRI, a capability uh, is, it will be difficult for the technologist. However, definitely this scenario having a major impact of radiologist uh, involvement by the time factors, okay? And it will affect the workflow. how to manage this by the new era of 3D ultrasound. It's helping uh, in these limitations of handheld ultrasounds. This is a handheld ultrasound and this is the 3D ultrasounds and obviously here using a, a high resolution linear transducer with a footprint narrow up to the 5.8 centimeter in width while in the 3D using a high resolution volumetric uh, linear transducers uh, with a footprint up to 15 centimeters. So it will result in really very fast study while the hand hilt is time consuming. Okay, comparing the hand hilt with automated, also the hand hilt can be performed by radiologist, sonographer or mammography technologist while the automated usually performed by the sonographer or the technologist with the image saved uh, later for the radiologist to uh, inter, uh, for interpret it, okay? So this will increase radiologist efficiency and the hand tilt, as you know, is operator dependent. It need meticulous 
attention to scanning technique and good skills and all this, the automated is less operator dependent. And both should be interpreted by a radiologist while automated ultrasound having ability to depict the interpret in a single image, the handheld uh, could not depict the interpret in one image setting. And handheld ultrasound having limited ability to scan the interpret, especially if it is large, if it is huge, you might miss part of the breast that can result in cancer missing, while the automated breast uh, giving a better imaging of the whole breast and increase the efficiency for cancer detection by almost 100% as compared to mammography alone and increase reproducibility, which could aid in the follow-up lesions. Handheld ultrasound used usually uh, it's being used usually in diagnostic setting, while the automated usually uh, in a screening setting. This is the image of 3D automated ultrasound of a dense breast demonstrated multifocal. Okay, uh, suspicious masses in a case of invasive cancer. This is a nipple and look uh, even shows where the lesions related to the uh, nipple. And here, this is the patient is lying subine and the technologist doing the 3D, taking almost three uh, views, you see. This is at the center, a view going laterally, taking a view obliquely and going medially and taking another view. When you look here, the nipple at the center, this is the one view, the central part, okay? And when you see the nipple going more medially, a larger breast laterally here, this is the lateral view and this is the medial view and the same for the contralateral breast. This is for the right and this is for the left breast. And this is the acquired image, okay? In the transverse, the axils, and in the sagittal, as well as in the coronal, this is the breast. You see, these are the three planes. The image will be taken in, the, in those planes, the sagittal, the axials, coronal, as well as the 3D uh, reconstructions, and all preserved in the system for the radiologist to interpret it. And also they can use the elastography, you see, with the 3D image as shown in these examples. You see, which elastography is used here? Mm -hmm. Shear wave elastography. Yes, this is the shear wave elastography used with the 3D demonstrate stiff, demonstrate stiff lesions here. See, this is yellow and this is a stiff uh, or moderately, we can say a moderately stiff lesions. Let us see what is written here is screening. Uh, tomosensis is not shown, 75-year-old lady. The patient recalled for targeted ultrasound confirmed the presence of small, irregular, uh, suspicious hypochoic, and non-parallel in distinct margin. The 3D combined uh, with elastography demonstrate irregular mass. For an upper corner transfer, and it was an infiltrating ductile carcinoma. Okay. 
So, in summary, as what 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 is what is what you are talking? Could you please mute your uh, microphone? Excuse me. Would you please mute your microphone? Okay. In summary, as ultrasound imaging technology advances, new methods offer incremental information over what basic scanning can yield. And almost all of above new techniques are now available in modern ultrasound unit and are optional, and we have to use it. What is the benefit for that, of using this new ultrasound technique? have been offered in this modern ultrasound machine, definitely increasing sensitivity as well as specificity of press ultrasound and then improving the image quality. So by performing high quality, high quality press ultrasound definitely will improve press ultrasound diagnostic accuracy confidence and consistency will increase patient throughout will improve cancer detection rate at the same time will decrease the rate of intervention for benign lesion especially in the young woman where ultrasound should be the diagnostic tool of choice however it should be borne in mind that breast ultrasound is extremely operator dependent if a system's many image parameters are not optimally modulated, poor image quality can lead to serious misinterpretations, such as mistaken a cancer for a cyst. And therefore, it is essential to receive appropriate training and use the appropriate equipment. Automated press ultrasound system overcome most of these limitations. It is scanned the whole press volume and increase the cancer pickup rate by almost 100% as compared to mammography alone. And it used uh, the use of the 3D automated ultrasound add additional features to image and is slowly refining benign and malignant characteristics of breast masses. And other areas of future progress include contrast enhanced ultrasound, uh, up to acoustic ultrasound and AI. And thank you very much. Do you know Jabalensity? Yes. Who said yes? I hear of it much in uh, near Laviat, I think. Yes, 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 yes. Jibna and Fasir is very nice there. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is the last city related to the north. You see? Mm -hmm. It is location between the north and south. Yes. Yeah. It is my city. Uh -huh, it is my village. Oh, now, no. but before it yes. was, but it is really, yeah, and very nice. Look how it is green. Mm -hmm. green. And there are two mountains. The name is from uh, the mountains. It has two big mountains. Uh -huh. And the White Nile running at mm -hmm. the south of the city. Mm -hmm. At the north, uh, not, uh, not the south, at the, at the west. At the east uh, is, uh, is the two mountains, while at the west is the, uh, is the, is the white knife. Mm -hmm. Many petroleum. You. Okay, thank you for you, Dr. Rabab. Thank I you. Hope, I hope it, yeah, it is digestible or it was digestible topic. Yes. Nice topic, interesting. It is not so hard as you mentioned. 
Kawafti na say awal. I just, I just prepare you. I just prepare. So as not to... <laughs> Expectation. Karatak terwing kita lagi. Masya Allah. 